Are you serious? Okay. Welcome back to Ask the Energy Advisor. I'm your energy advisor, Brian Hawk, up at Noble REMC. Uh, today we're going to talk about heat pump water heaters. Actually, we're going to talk about both styles of water heaters, but we're going to focus on heat pump water heaters. And what is a heat pump water heater? As you can see, they look similar, but they're not quite. Heat pump water heaters, or hybrid water heaters as they're called, they're taking two old technologies and marrying them together. So essentially, this is, <clears throat> if I were to put a rating to it, about a half ton of air conditioner sitting on top of this water heater. They wrap refrigerant coils around the tank, super insulate it, and then they use the refrigeration process to pull heat from the surrounding air and put it into your water. So why is that such a big difference? So we've got electric elements here, got an electric element here. These guys operate at 4,500 watts every time they kick on. This guy operates at 600 watts. So what that boils down to is when you look at your federal energy guide on the traditional electric water heater, the estimated yearly energy cost is $424. And with this heat pump or hybrid water heater, it's $116. So as you can see, there's a real substantial difference there on operational costs. Um, they do, there is another style of this heat pump water heater available. It's It'll look more like a mini split or a ductless heat pump. That unit will sit outside. There will be a storage tank inside somewhere. Water lines will be plumbed from the water heater to the heat pump and back. So it's actually utilizing outside air instead of living space air. Um, warmer climates, that's a lot, you know, that's a great option. It's actually going to be a good option around here too. It's just not quite as popular. So what we're going to talk about today is this guy. Um, Again, the difference is having a heat pump, it, it's got a couple little quirks to it that this one doesn't. In the plumbing world, we call these nipples. And on a uh, standard electric water heater, they are on top. And as you can see on the hybrid or the heat pump, they are on the side. Again, you've got a fill tube that fills the, pushes the cold water down. Cold water comes in on the bottom side here, so life is good. Pressure relief, pressure relief. Everything else is pretty much a standard. Being an air conditioner or acting as an air conditioner on top, you know, much like an air conditioner in a home or in a window, it is going to pull moisture from the air. So we've got a couple condensate drains there. This is the primary, this is the secondary backup. So one thing you'll have to have if you want to install this <clears throat> is a condensate drain somewhere nearby. Most utility rooms have a furnace with an AC coil in it, and so there's going to either be a condensate pump or drain nearby, so that's usually not an issue. Um, brings me to my next point. Um, where can you install this water heater? Knowing that you're going to have condensate in there, um, it really shines well in a basement. It does a great job in a basement. Again, being an air conditioner, pulling moisture out of the air. If you're running a dehumidifier, this will help take some of the load off of that dehumidifier. I won't be so bold as to say it'll take it all, but it will definitely help keep that dehumidifier from running. Um, something I just missed uh, while we were talking about the differences is, as you can see, maybe you can't, but there's a fan right here. And on the top of this, we have a little screen and there's a input or an inlet right there. So this unit's gonna pull air in and push it across the coil and push it right back out. With this filter here, it's very similar to what a mini split heat pump filter is made out of. It's just a plastic frame with some real, uh, it's not super fine, so it's not going to have a super MERV rating, but not going to be a lot of maintenance to this. You're just going to need to periodically check it. Um, so that being said, we'll come back to some of the operational differences between the heat pump water heater and the standard electric. Standard electric, you got one mode, electric only. With the heat pump water heater, we have four modes here. We have efficiency, hybrid, electric, vacation. Efficiency mode will be heat pump only. That's gonna get us up, you know, we talked about the energy guide label. This one is 95% efficient. This one is 345% efficient. So in efficiency mode, we're going to be running at that 345% efficient only. <clears throat> this water heater is rated at two 17 minute showers back to back. So in efficiency mode, you may risk the opportunity of running out of hot water. If we take that into hybrid mode, then we're going to have access to our heating elements. 
Going to act very similar as the efficiency mode. It's always going to try and satisfy your hot water needs with this heat pump sitting on top of this air conditioner sitting on top. But if it senses that it cannot keep up with the demand, it will kick in the electric elements so you don't run out of hot water. That's the beauty of this water heater. Now, you're going to go right back to the um, similar usage of what this guy is as long as it's operating in that mode. So you're, you're going to want to if you, if you think you're going to go over two 17 minute showers back to back, you may want to do a little more research on this guy and we'll talk about that in a little bit. We have electric only mode. If something were to fail on this heat pump, you can actually just put it in electric only mode and it'll just operate the exact same efficiency as this water heater here. Vacation mode. You have up to 99 days you can be away from your house and this guy will <clears throat> go down to 70 degrees and operate almost hardly at all. You know, it's not going to use much energy at all, which it doesn't anyway, but that's kind of a nice little function to it. Um, nice thing about this one is uh, I get a lot of calls about tankless. This guy is going to cost you about the same or less to operate as what a tankless water heater does. The beauty of this one is it's a flush at one time of year maintenance schedule. A tankless water heater, there's descaling, deliming, derusting. You know, you've got to run some solution through that tankless or you really should run some solution through that tankless a couple times a year. Again, this guy really shines well in a basement. I don't recommend installing this um, in a single floor application where it's going to be near people or where you're going to have a television or anything like that. Being a little mini air conditioner or heat pump on top of here, it is going to make some noise. Uh, it's slightly louder than a refrigerator and then it's going to cool the space that it's in slightly. So some comfort and, you know, comfort's going to go with either skin or, or um, ears, whatever you want to call it. So really that's about all I have to say about them. One thing you can always do is go to university.hotwater.com. University.hotwater.com. That is A.O. Smith's technical website and they have plenty of videos on both of these water heaters. They can answer just about any question you would have. Um, this one is the HPTU50N130. This one is the ENT50120. So you can plug those numbers in on their website and look it up. So I think that's all we have to say about heat pump water heaters. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate the comments you leave. And looking forward to the next video.